your goal is not necessarily to get this person to understand and approve of your solution. Mm -hmm. Your goal is to get this person to realize that you've made what you believe is the best, most logical, most compliant solution you can. Well, so uh, I'm back here today uh, with Dustin, who has been, uh, I think this is like our third Q&A session, right, Dustin? Right. I'm a frequent flyer of the of the James Shepard consult. That's right. Well, I like it. I we uh, you know we've talked already about some really interesting things in terms of cash discounting compliance and things like that, and it sounds like some things have kind of come full circle along those lines. So, you know, tell our audience what's going on, and I'll do my best to answer your question. Yes, yeah, so we have another uh, challenge in one. Um, we have a uh, fast food chain, 45 location, a uh, few million dollars a month. Um, okay. They do an astronomical amount of transactions. I want to say something like 200,000 a month. And, and as a result of that, you know, they have their online contact us customer complaint uh, uh, set up. And, you know, the, in that many transactions a month, they're always getting you know, some sort of complaint about the cash discount, but they're usually, you know, the vast, vast majority of the time, they are people who are confusing surcharging, claiming you can't charge on a debit, on a debit card. card. So, yeah, and I used your advice from an earlier conversation um, just to sort of reply to them with copies of the stickers and an explanation pointing to the, uh, the Durban Amendment and all that good stuff, and that right. typically works. But this week we had a guy who, um, you know, who essentially said, look, um, first he thought surcharging rules, right? So we got through that piece. And then he said to me, well, you guys are charging me extra tax. And what he means is, let's say you have a $10 transaction, the fee is $10 and 40 cents, or excuse me, it's a $10, it's a $10 transaction, tax is a dollar, then you tack on whatever that fee would be on top. Well, that fee, the 4%, he's saying, listen, you're adding 4% to the dollar tax. tax. Yeah. And, you know, he went as far to tell, as far to tell me that he's, you know, turned in other restaurant chains that, that he, that were overcharging for tax, you know, and then another way he put it was essentially, he said in our area in Tennessee, the tax is 9.75%. But in this scenario, you effectively charge me 10%. And I, and I have a complaint, and I'm going to, I'm going to file that. And sure. I just didn't have a response, because I never really thought that through. I talked to a couple other guys that are well respected in our industry, uh, that do a ton of cash discounting. And, and everyone's response is kind of the same. Uh, we've never had that complaint before. Yeah, you know, they really didn't I've, have it. I've dealt with it. Uh, I've dealt with it about a hundred times, actually. <laughs> oh, awesome. The reason why nobody's dealing with it is they're not selling big accounts. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I will say what's interesting is I've actually never dealt with a customer having the complaint. Um, mm -hmm. What's what's happened more commonly is the merchant will come back and say, you know, my accountant did our taxes and mm -hmm. they said that we didn't collect enough sales tax. Mm -hmm. Right. That happens a lot. Um, or they say we collected too much sales tax. Right. So either of those two is actually really bad um, and that makes it look really bad. So a couple of things. I'm going to give you the short answer to a very, very complicated question. Um, and then I'm going to recommend that you read the ebook that I just wrote about this exact topic. Um, okay. So ccsalespro.com slash sales tax, all lowercase, all one word ccsalespro.com slash um, sales tax. But yeah, let's, let's talk about it a second. So ultimately the question is, uh, we, we, have, we have two different problems that we need to solve. Problem number one is compliance and just understanding how this should work, right? So mm -hmm. the way this should work is actually really simple, which is the good news. The additional 4% that we are adding to this transaction in one form or another, that is actually part of the regular price. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sales tax must be collected on the regular price. Right. Okay. So really you want to make sure that you are having, you know, the regular price and then you're charging sales tax on the regular price. Yeah. So very simple, but the idea is that sales tax, in my opinion, not my opinion, it's just, it's the truth. I mean, I don't want to put it. If, if you're dealing with a large merchant, especially mm -hmm. sales tax must come after you add in um, the you know non-cash adjustment or service fee or whatever it is, even if it's surcharging, same thing. So 
sales tax must come after that for two really, really important reasons. Number one, because if it doesn't come after it, then you actually did not collect the right amount of sales tax. Um, and that's a big deal. But secondly, the merchant is then not collecting the right amount of sales tax. And that's what really matters because for most of these large businesses like this, and this is why it comes up for large businesses, not small ones. If you're using a Sam's Club register, you're never going to realize that you collected the wrong amount. If you're using a point of sale solution that actually says, you know, it has a line item for sales tax. Well, when you get to the end of the month or the end of the quarter and you go to file your sales tax reports and it doesn't add up, your accountant's going to say, hey, what's going on? Um, and so that's a problem. Now, in this case, it's even a bigger issue because, of course, we have a, an upset customer that doesn't mm -hmm. understand how all this works either. So that's that's the easy part. Okay. The difficult part is, OK, so we do that. Well, now, how does that work? How do we collect the right amount of money? You know, what do we charge the merchants so that this all averages out? OK, and so. The key here is we have to actually understand the sales tax side of it, meaning it's going to be different for each merchant. So mm -hmm. now when we look at what is the you know service fee going to be and then what is what are we going to charge the merchant and what's the daily discount going to be? Now, I don't know on this big merchant, are they on like a daily discount? Uh, yes, they're on daily. They discount. are. So you are actually collecting this revenue. Okay. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. So yeah, so what's going to happen is we're going to have to adjust the amount that we're collecting from them um, mm -hmm. in order to offset because the, the, the problem is, okay, we have this $10 transaction. Let's mm -hmm. just say it's a 10% tax to make the math a little easier. Yeah. So $10, you add 4%, 4 so now we're at $10.40. Now you're going to add another, you know, what would that be, uh, you know, 10, well, no, actually, I guess that'd be like, what, a dollar and four cents. So right. in tax, if it's 10%. So now we're going to add another dollar and four. Well, the question is, when that transaction actually goes through, mm -hmm. we have a couple of issues, right? Because now when that transaction goes through, it, it actually was like $11.44. Mm -hmm. And so we need to know what percentage of that $11.44 do we need to collect? Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that we're charging the correct amount so that what we charge and what we collect are the same and that we're able to offset the cost. So long story short, your chart, your, you know, the merchant is technically collecting 4%, but they're not collecting 4% on the total transaction. They're collecting 4% on the transaction pre-tax and, and before the 4%. Mm. So they're collecting 4% on the $10, not on the $11.44. So what that means is the, the amount you're able to charge the merchant and the amount you're able to collect is pretty mm. significantly less than 4%. Um, right. And so the real loss here is margin. So to do it right, this is one of the other reasons I always tell people, I'm like, if you're selling a big account, don't just automatically drop down below 4% because mm -hmm. you don't understand, you're not going to collect 4%. You're going to collect probably in your case, probably 3.2, 3.25% mm -hmm. because by the time you get done, <clears throat> excuse me, accounting for the fact that you're charging them that 3.2, 3.25% or whatever it is, you're going to be charging them that fee on the entire $11.44. Right. So, okay, that's a problem. Then you got to collect the money on the entire 1144. So long story short, it's good that you're up in that 4% range because you're going to, you're going to come down, you know, pretty significantly. So um, you had said, Hey, they're collecting the fee on what I call the base amount, but the combo costs $10, right? And today the combo costs $10. We're adding a dollar. Uh, or then there's a dollar for tax, right? Mm -hmm. They are currently collecting the fee on the $11 and you're suggesting collect the fee pre-tax. I'm not suggesting it. I'm saying that's the only legal way to do it. The only, okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. So, because, because again, I mean, you, you just, the thing you have to understand is, so, so let's, let's talk about why that, that, why that would be a really big problem. And again, I, I'm over dramatizing this a little bit because no, I get it. for a big business like this, this is a really big deal. If you're selling, you yeah. know, 10,000 a month mom and pop shop, you can, you can just turn it off right now. And it's not going to matter to you that much. It's not going to matter to the business owner either. When you're dealing with mega, mega businesses, what you have to understand is let's, let's run the math on that, right? So let's put aside the fact that the customer's right and that you're actually charging the wrong amount of tax. But let's put that aside for yeah. a second. If we charge $10, then we add the dollar to $11, right? Then we add on the, the 4% service fee, right? Well, mm -hmm. the problem is that the merchant did not collect tax on that service fee. Right. But it's part of their revenue. 
right. and you pay sales tax on total revenue. Right. So now we have a pretty big problem because, you know, depending on how their software handles it, I've actually de dealt with several like big merchants mm -hmm. that actually underpaid their sales tax commitment. Right. Which is blatantly illegal. Yeah. And they did it unknowingly because what happened is, you know, that service fee line item ended up kind of getting lumped in with all the tax and all kind of the after transaction stuff and they didn't deal with it right. So the important thing is, you know, and, and I'll tell you one other thing too, why it's why it's really not compliant is because the the whole concept of cash discounting is built around the idea of the regular price. So right. we are increase, you know, we're we're not increasing the regular price. Like it's this is the new regular price. It's not being increased at the point of sale, it's being decreased if you pay cash. Right. 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 So this is our regular price. So mm -hmm. as a result, sales tax always comes after the regular price. But you know, let's talk about dealing with this particular customer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in, you know, I'll tell you a couple keys to dealing with these types of, of people uh, in general. Okay. Key number one is pull them in to help you solve this problem. Right. So reach out and say, you know what, we've been having meetings we hired a consultant because mm -hmm. your complaint, you know, your concern that you had, we take that very seriously and mm -hmm. we want to run through with you our solution. And I just want to double check and make sure with you that you agree that this is the right solution. Like bring them yeah. in, mm -hmm. right? They need to become part of your team to solve this problem. Otherwise they're going to be your enemy. So you, you want to pull them in close. Uh, we'll go back to the Godfather, right? Keep mm -hmm. your friends close, your enemies closer. <laughs> so that's yeah. where we're at, right? So yeah. bring this person in. Um, and secondly, don't be afraid to get really complicated with them in your solution. Like mm -hmm. seriously, when you read this ebook for like the fifth time, mm -hmm. you're going to understand half of it. Um, yeah. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. He's not going to understand it either. So that's mm -hmm. fine. Just, you know, bring them in. And then it's like, here's our solution. We're going to do this and this and this, and just lay it out for them. Um, I've tried to do a really good job in the ebook of like really making it like, you know, right there and, and make it obvious. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it is complicated. Don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of overcomplicating it. Your, your goal is not necessarily to get this person to understand and approve of your solution. Mm -hmm. Your goal is to get this person to realize that you care about it and that you've made what you believe is the best, most logical, most compliant solution you can. Um, right. And if this person believes that, they're going to leave you alone. They're going to be fine.